What is up guys, Thaddeus here. Um, coming from a webcam and the ASMR mic. But funny situation actually, both my camera batteries died. Okay, then I grabbed my other camera, the one I used to actually take pictures and film like content for brands and stuff. That one, the battery was already dead. And then my iPhone's out of storage. So now I'm on my Mac webcam. Great, fucking fantastic. Okay, well, with this video guys, I kinda, uh, you know, I don't expect this to get that many views actually, just because one, it's a topic that most people, like I haven't seen discussed at all anywhere really. Um, in terms of like YouTube, Twitter, you know, anything like that, um, in terms of just like content and something like that. But basically guys, I want to talk about sensory marketing, uh, kind of what it is and how you guys can use it. It's not, uh, it's not super tied into drop shipping. Um, but when you guys, you know, like in, in terms of drop shipping 2019 and just like the long term game plan that you guys should be, you know, keeping in mind by, you know, transitioning your store eventually from a drop shipping brand into a white label, private label brand that, you know, has its own inventory, has its own packaging, its own custom inserts, and, you know, actually can deliver a proper customer unboxing experience and stuff like that. Um, that's where sensory marketing really, really, really comes into play. Okay. So what, what, what <laughs> move the mic a little bit closer. What is sensory marketing? <laughs> Well, basically, guys, sensory marketing is if, if this is jingling a lot. You guys know I got this Buzz Lightyear ice in Tokyo, fucking solid. Um, so what is sensory marketing? Sensory marketing is essentially using um, you know, our our five natural senses, whether it's uh, touch, sight, smell, hearing, and taste. Okay, so those those five senses, right? That that we are just innately. Uh, born with that we have those right and so sensory marketing is the, the the act of marketing that capitalizes on all those senses to make us you know uh, to, to like lower our risk aversion to a brand um, to you know make us more comfortable with a brand and eventually get us to purchase their product or you know buy into their company by using these senses okay and so you know your first question be like what, what, what are you talking about like how, how do you actually go about doing that how do I do that with my own brand um, so I think the best way to actually kind of like explain that for you guys is actually to use some use cases before okay so for example right I did a little digging for you guys so Hershey kisses okay the the, the little the, the little candy the ch little chocolate things right they use sensory marketing, you know, again, they, they use multiple senses, but one of their biggest ones is that little foil wrapper that you that you take off, right? When you're getting that Hershey Kiss and you like, you know, they've marketed that well, you've seen that before, like they've literally shown ads taking off the foil, right? That's a tactile sensory, that's touch right there, that, you know, the act of just taking off that foil and that little thing that's on top of it, right? That that's that's capitalizing on sensory marketing. That's making like again that that is in in essence a, a customer unboxing experience um, when they're buying this Hershey Kiss, right? When they're buying this chocolate bar, that's a tactile response that they feel with that product. Okay. Um, another one. This isn't actually like this is actually a stat, guys. Okay, where a company used sensory marketing to make more money. Okay, to to like to literally generate uh, more foot traffic and then more sales. Okay, so you guys are familiar with Starbucks. Okay, you guys are probably familiar with Dunkin' Donuts. All right, Dunkin' Donuts actually conducted this test in South Korea. All right, I'll have, a, I'll have the link to the source too down below so you guys can check it out too if you want. But they did a test in South Korea, all right? And what they did was whenever the Dunkin' Donuts theme song or the jingle, whatever you want to call it, whenever it played at a bus stop, right? So like they, they, would, they would set it up and so they would play it at bus stops around their locations, okay? Whenever that theme song played, they would have like an air freshener and that air freshener would like shoot out like a coffee aroma, right? A coffee scent, um, something like that, which again is capitalizing on sensory marketing, okay? So, so now they're, they're smelling this thing when they hear um, the, the Dunkin' Donuts theme song, all right? Now, after doing this around all their bus stops, okay, in South Korea, so their, sa <laughs> get this guy, their sales increased by 29%, 29 fucking percent around the bus stop outlets, okay? And then their traffic to Dunkin' Donuts, to those stores, right? And so like 29% is like once they're inside, right? They like just their general sales increase by 29%. Um, but the actual general foot traffic to their stores, to their outlets by these bus stops increased by 16%, okay? And that was just doing this this weird sensory marketing, right? This is something that a lot of people in the dropshipping space just don't, don't use. And again, it's not because, it's not like you need to use that in dropshipping. In fact, it's very hard to, you know, capitalize on sensory marketing in the dropshipping uh, field. But again, I'm doing this because, you know, myself, my YouTube channel, um, a lot of what I do, right, is with white label, private label products. And I want to help you guys transition that too and help the people that are looking for more content in white label, private label products and then talk about sensory marketing because it's so, so important, right? Like, it's like, like, why do you think people like the new car smell, right? Have a new car. Oh, it smells so good. That's, that's sensory marketing. People love the new car smell. 
okay? Or why do you think some people like the sound of like a door closed? Like, like for example, a G-Wagon, right? You close that door, oh my God, it sounds like you just closed a tank and you're just like, I feel like a fucking badass, okay? So that's that's sensory marketing, okay? Um, what's another, like, a, like for example, like sensory marketing, uh, like there's companies that are starting to use technology now, like BMW, right? They, they add that fake engine noise to their BMW i8. Sensory marketing, right? To make the driver's experience of their product feel that much better, okay? Although I think that's a terrible decision, especially with car people, uh, to, <laughs> to fake the engine noise. But um, again, it is their attempt at sensory marketing and trying to, again, further the customer, uh, you know, the user experience, the unboxing sense, whatever it is, but just further their experience to get them more connected and like intertwined with their brand, okay? That, that's that's really the essence of it. Now, now you might be asking, okay, well, you know, I just sell products online. I don't have, you know, I'm not a car company. I don't sell food. Um, you know, I'm selling clothing or I'm selling whatever it is, camera straps for fuck's sake, like whatever you're selling, which by the way is a good product on AliExpress. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so you know, how, how, how do you actually go about doing that, okay? Basically, here, here's an example, okay? So for example, if I, I sold, you know, bracelets and stuff like that, okay? When I when I was, you know, in getting started in e-commerce when I was drop shipping them, right? Then when I transitioned to a, a my private label brand, right? When I was selling high-end luxury bracelets, okay? This is what I did wrong. This is what I would have done, right? So before I focused on two of probably the most important, you know, sen senses that, that you would need is like touch, right? And sight, okay? So those are the two that most companies do really, really well, right? So touch is like the material of the packaging, right? How does it feel? How does it, you know, like, like is the quality good? Like the, does it feel good in the hands or when someone's holding it, when someone's holding your product, stuff like that, okay? Like Apple, right? For example, you, you ever see those videos where, where they take that Apple packaging box and they like, they take it off and it like goes off really slow and you're just like, oh fuck, like that's what I'm talking about, okay? Or, um, we're getting, yeah, so that goes back to like like the actual touch, right? And the feeling that the consumer gets when, when, when they're playing around with your product, okay? Now, the next one that most most companies capitalize really well on is uh, I'm talking about sight, okay? Sight, so like having really, you know, aesthetically pleasing um, packaging, having, you know, a modern design, having, you know, like like a unique packaging box, like anything like that. Like that's what most companies try to do. Like, they, like, like a company's packaging box is them, you know, uh, trying to have that that sort of that sight um, in the sense is just to make make it be like oh that's brand recognition they see your brand uh, they enjoy your brand they're excited to to open the product they're like oh that's you know that's from Amazon oh I, I just ordered that thing like I want it right now like that that's sensory marketing okay guys and that's that's kind of how you can capitalize and now you know you might be like thinking like okay how can I capitalize on the other senses right so f for e-commerce right especially if you know once you're transitioning into a white label high level brand and if you have um, like for example, if, if I'm selling in the fashion industry, right? Cause that's, that's where my newest ones that I'm like the documentary, the ring documentary that I'm working on for you guys. And you know, the internet misfits brand that I'm working on, which is low key, but it's coming. Um, like those companies, right? How, how do you capitalize on like hearing and taste? Um, it's pretty hard. Like you, it, it would be challenging to capitalize on like taste for, you know, like unless you want people to eat your packaging, like that's not, that's not you know, uh, something that, you, that you're going to be do, um, and that's okay. And e either with hearing too, um, that's, that's not going to be a huge one, right? But the, the the third one, or like the last one that I haven't talked about, right, is smell, okay? Now, what can you do as a brand, right, in terms of smelling that, that can help people, you know, that, that can improve the user's experience, the unboxing experience, the usage experience, you know, when they're actually using your product, going through your product. And, you know, the, the trick, like, eat, like I saw, um, what's it, like, some big, like, Create Tyler, okay, for example, he just did this too. And I was like, he's smart. He knows what he's doing. But um, what he did was he sprayed, you know, his favorite, like, oh, like, like, uh, scent or not, not cologne, but like scent, like aroma, right? He sprayed that on all his products before he shipped them out, okay? Before, before he shipped them out to customers, okay? Um, and then when they opened it, right? They, you know, one, like, they're already capitalizing on like the touch in the site, right? The packaging. Oh, you know, it looks really good. I really like this. I'm excited to open it. And then, you know, the, uh, the site, right? Um, what the message was and the touch again is the packaging the quality and stuff like that but then the smell they open the box right brand new it, it, like it's like that new car smell right but it's it's a different scent and now they associate that scent with your brand okay and it's just something to further the experience guys so it's not like oh you need to you know douse all your shit in cologne before you send it out to customers that's, that's not the case you don't you don't need to do that but just having a very very faint smell like it's why disneyland guys disneyland okay if you don't know this in all their parks they have air fresheners that just spray the scent of fresh air which is why if you go there, you're like, oh, wow, this feels really, really good. Like it feels clean, um, you know, on top of them just like, actually like keeping the park 
like impeccable, like super, super clean. Like it smells clean. Like it smells good. And you're like, I like this. I'm enjoying it. They're, you're improving the user experience. Okay guys. So like, that's what I want to make this video about. And that's like, again, I know I've been talking for like 10 minutes and stuff and I literally have a flight to catch in an hour. Oh my God. In an hour. Oh fuck. Okay. Well, uh, well not an hour, but I want to have, which I'm still in trouble. Um, okay. So but that, that was basically the video guys. Like I wanted to just touch on you know, sensory marketing. I haven't seen anyone really talk about it. I tweeted something about it um, a little bit ago. Um, you know, that got that got some traction. So I was like, hey, this is probably worthy for for a YouTube video. And here I am making it. If you're watching it, made it out of the vault. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, that's, that's really what I wanted to 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 talk about in this video um, and kind of introduce you guys to that sort of field of you know sensory marketing because I'm I'm sure a lot of the beginners haven't heard of that at all. And some of you guys that are running your own, you know. Uh, private white label brands could probably benefit from something like this, you know, like having a really um, just having a different but cool sort of sense, a very, very fragile. Like, I'm not saying like spray that shit, like don't do that, like just kind of like a little touch. Could go a really long way with, the, with like a client or a customer, guys. Like when they unbox that, okay, that's the feeling they get, and that's, that's literally everything, okay. The feeling they get, especially the first impression they get of your product, okay, when someone's unboxing it or going through it, the, the user experience, okay, that that's going to determine what they think of your company, what they think of your brand going down the road, what they tell other people, what they tell their friends like, Oh, you know, this is it. And it like, they, they probably won't mention the, sp the smell unless you really doused it. But just having that smell like associated with that, right. Is, is something that, that again, capitalizes on the whole sensory marketing tactic that, that, we, that we've been talking about. Okay. So, um, that's basically the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, again, sorry for recording on my webcam. I just, like I have this flight to catch and I really want to get a video. I promise you guys every other day. So it's going to fucking happen one way or another. So that's it. That's the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to drop a comment. I respond to everybody's comments within like a two day time period. Okay. Uh, don't kill me. Um, and make sure to subscribe if you're new. Okay. Um, hope you guys again, enjoy the video links in the description for basically everything. There's some free stuff, 69 profitable products. There's the course if you're interested, although I, depending on, what your experience level is, I might hold off until I drop the free thing because that's probably going to be better for you. Um, look at me. I was literally telling you guys to get the free thing and not pay for it, okay? Um, what are, there's a bunch of other... I mean, there's, there's just stuff down there, guys. I think I just opened up like a mentorship. I don't even know if I'm going to do that though, honestly. So um, that may not be down there. Um, but there's a bunch of other stuff, guys. So, like custom websites, anything, okay? Blah, blah, blah. I will see you guys here. By the time you're watching this video, I will be in Arizona surprising Sebastian Gugogugugu for his birthday. So uh, he doesn't know, actually. I told him I couldn't make it. He was really sad. So that's where I'm going to be. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Shoots. Yeah.